Hello, and welcome to Saturday Morning Cartoons, the weekly podcast that revisits, reviews, and ridicules some of the world's weirdest animated series. Coming to you from the year 3994, I'll be your host, Dave Trumbor. And joining me as always, currently residing in the ruins of Manhattan, it's Sean Paul Ellis. <laughs> how are you, sir? David, 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 how are you doing, you devil dog? Oh, doing quite well. Demon dog, it's demon dog. Come De- on, man. Demon dog, demon dog, God. Demon dog. And completing our heroic trio today, it's Matt Baron the Mock. How's it going? <laughs> Didn't expect that one. <laughs> Exactly, well said. <laughs> Well said. We speak mock here at Saturday Morning Cartoons. Of course, we are going to be talking about Thundar the Barbarian today. Uh, if you didn't, oh if you didn't God, pick up on that. This is Sean's pick, and Sean is very excited to talk about it, as are we all. I think we all enjoyed this one. Um, we'll get into it in a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit of history first, and Matt is going to bring you up to speed on that. So take it away. Okay, so the Thundar the Barbarian... Okay, the show is just so fucking insane it just absolutely blows my mind <laughs> but uh it ran for two seasons um it's a ruby spirits production of course. and you know you can tell pretty much in the first 30 seconds just by the animation style uh but two seasons 1980 to 1981 and then 1981 to 82 um they had three um action figures of the main characters uh but also um with the episodes, there were 21 half-hour episodes, yep. um, which appeared actually on NBC's Saturday morning lineup. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, not I mean, surprisingly, not surprising that this is a Ruby Spears production. Uh, kind of surprising there were only 21 episodes. I don't know why. I mean, this was like, yeah, early Yeah, that 80s. is shockingly <laughs> short for yeah, us. Yeah, I don't know why. And it was actually pretty, like decent too so i'm kind of surprised why it was only 21 instead of you know the usual 65 that we see all the time but i don't know it's kind of a weird one um there were a couple other things i think just from the history the show notes there's some discrepancies about like who actually designed these characters they do kind of have this hanna barbera look to them but it's it's definitely right. a ruby spears thing um a lot there, of, there was like a yeah. there was a second like in my brain i can feel like here's i was I was concerned because, like, again, like, you know, last week we did Popples. I was like, I want something different, but I kind of <laughs> want to go outside of, like, what's going to be my, my comfort zone. Okay. Uh, I had confused this in my head for a while prior to making the decision last week uh, to pick this show where I had confused this with, like, Herculoids. Yeah, and, like, Mitor and that kind of era of, yeah. of stuff that, like, 60s. Oh, no. I totally got, like, the Space Ghost well, that's and interesting, actually, that you say that, because right. Alex Toth, uh, I believe who's also a comic artist uh, and designed the Space Ghost characters, designed the three main characters that we'll talk about here in a little bit. So those designs are similar for a reason, because it's the same guy that designed uh, both sets of characters. A lot of people think that Jack Kirby actually designed those characters, and while Kirby was involved with the show, apparently he didn't have quite that much <laughs> that much time to dedicate to Thundar the Barbarian, so he actually designed uh, the show's villains, the wizards that populate this world, and a lot of other like secondary characters. His The main villain that's in this show, by the name of Gemini, looks almost exactly like Kirby's dark side character, so if you see some similarities, that's where Kirby's influence kind of yes. came from. Yeah. Yes. And then I think... I think that pretty much is it for the show notes. Sean, did you have anything else from like voice actors or anything? No, I mean I, I don't. Uh, I, I didn't see anything specific about the voice yeah. actors. I just I'm I'm like I'm super. I just this is again one of those amazing shows where like uh, they drop you in the middle oh, of yeah. everything that's going on. Like you do not need to know anything else beyond what they give you in this opening narration and guess what that's what i'm about to give you because it's a great synopsis so, of the show oh so, this is oh i love it i'm actually just gonna i'm gonna go ahead and just read this synopsis because this is the narration please, please, you please. hear to awesome kind of orchestral powerful music and the opening of the and show. it's all you get yeah it's all you get and then right into it man which i like honestly like let me let me just, i do too yeah. i do too like let me enjoy the this, show yeah and and like and before you get into this this yeah. was like just enough narration yeah where like you you understand what like what the state of the world is right now <laughs> you know it's not explained but, like, but you understand why it's, yeah like you understand you understand <laughs> why like they don't they don't need to give you like the details about everything you'll get the history a little bit more history yeah not enough frankly no. you get a little bit more history over like you know the the two seasons that the show was on but like there's just 
you know, they, they introduce some stuff and you're just like, that's an interesting thing. I'm curious to learn more about it. And like, I think that that's the mark of like a good opening or at least a good show just in general is like, you're not giving me all the answers. You are allowing me to, you're intriguing me to the point where I'm just like, I want to know more. So I'm going to keep watching. Yeah. And this show you know? definitely so does kinda... not get bogged down in exposition by any means. It is just nonstop oh my God. action. So Holy I'm going to give you just a little bit of exposition to start this off by reading the synopsis narration, and then we're going to get right into it. You guys ready? Here we go. The year, 1994. From out of space comes a runaway planet, hurtling between the Earth and the Moon, unleashing cosmic destruction. Man's civilization is cast in ruin. Two thousand years later, Earth is reborn. A strange new world rises from the old. A world of savagery, super science, and sorcery. But one man bursts his bonds to fight for justice, with his companions Ookla the Mock and Princess Ariel. He pits his strength, his courage, and his fabulous <laughs> sun sword against the forces of evil. He is Thundar the Barbarian. Oh, beautiful. And that's it, kids. Love it. That's all you need to know. Love it. Doesn't make any sense. Like, uh, the visuals I mean, are the, amazing. Makes no sense. The, the, oh my god. The, the, that's, <laughs> like, even before we get into the characters, yeah. just in this show, like... Uh, the thing that really sold me on this was, was just like the, the thing that they explain uh, is that like this comet mm -hmm. that is hurling between the earth and the moon, like right. as it's doing that, it it shatters the moon in fucking half. Yep, you had the me moon, at moon in half. The, the moon <laughs> is... <laughs> and moon. also, apparently, it sucks the entire atmosphere off. Yeah! Because <laughs> like, the best is just this swirling it, cloud that gets drawn out into space. It... It sucks all of our ozone and like everything of our atmosphere, like just out into like cosmic dust and shit in the middle of space. Hey, solve that you know? CO2 problem. All that shit's and, gone. Yeah, exactly. And the moon is just like, I've had enough of this shit <laughs> and just shatters in half. And, but like, I mean, it's just, here's the thing is that yeah. like, I know, I know from like flipping through news and stuff like that, like within like the last month, there was like reports about like an asteroid or like uh, you know like uh, something some yeah some space, space object entity, yeah some space object that was going to be hurtling through our solar system and people were just like but don't worry like it's not going to affect uh, it's going to come close but like it's not going to affect us and I think that that's what made Sundar so fun to me is that like there was a lot of moments in this show where I was just like. Yeah, I could see that happening. Like, yeah, okay, cool. Like, I get it. Like, I, that just, was just, the one just thought that the, never just, crossed my mind. <laughs> just, just, just with the intro, just with oh, the okay. setup of okay. how of how this happens. Everything else that happens in those two thousand years, I am continually asking myself, what the fuck? Well, look. So Baron, like, Baron brought up a great question earlier uh, offline. We were yes. getting ready for the show. Baron, do you remember what that question was? Yeah, how do you get from a uh, an, a planet <laughs> where the civilization is entirely destroyed to super science and sorcery two thousand years later? That makes no sense. And I, I really do not forget say, like, savagery. Yeah, it's savagery, brother. I I, savagery. I really want to know what a thousand years later was like. Yeah, like were they still kind of like I don't know piecing yeah. it back together? Was there a second apocalypse? That was it just war torn? Like when did the uh, when did sorcery? Were they, were, they, well, were, they, were they trying to get the band back together? Was it were regular science? Was it super science yet? <laughs> yeah, I don't was know. it regular was it like, science? <laughs> was it like mediocre science? Like it's just yeah, it was just like real good science about a thousand years later. Uh, it wasn't quite <laughs> yeah. super yet. It was just real good. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we we tried to you know no 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 I mean but like I mean, but like what do you think like because I've thought about this a little bit like today yeah it's know? just so weird uh, like the visuals of the show though are so strange because you've got all these weird creatures which some of them are your your heroes most of them are your bad guys obviously but then you've got things in the background like a jumbo jet like a passenger plane <laughs> crashed into yep. the ground just sitting there kind of covered in like vines and stuff but still very much intact. Uh, all the way down to, like, a pickup truck with its bumper and license plate clearly visible, or a Volkswagen Beetle, or just, like, skyscrapers. So, I mean, all the remnants of that, of our human civilization, is still there, and then there's all these, like, weird right. rat humanoids and crocodile men and all, all kinds right. of crazy shit. I don't know. Like fire whales. <laughs> fire yes, whales. fire whales are the best. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, it, just, the interesting thing about this is that, like, I want to go back to 1980 yeah. and be like, do you guys understand how things decay? 
Well, did they understand that in 14 years? That's my favorite part of this whole thing. No, that was the far flung year of 1994. Come on. I feel like I feel like Ruby Spears was living in like a day where they were just like, you know what, man? Tomorrow's never gonna happen, man. Like it's not. It's like we gotta live today now because 1994 this shit's all over like i just i feel like they were just really like i don't i feel like they were pe- very pessimistic in their outlook of what the future was going they to must have been because man they don't even like a lot of a lot of stories go at least 50 100 years into the future and that's clearly not enough but yeah, 14 man. years i mean that's pretty short-sighted they probably didn't even think they were going to be around in 1994 and they were correct yeah yeah so <laughs> they were correct. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, actually, you know, if you think about this like in a distilled form, yeah. it's really like the entire like the entire opening narration is just is a microcosm of the Ruby Spears production company. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like they flew, they flew too close and too high. Like they flew too close to the sun and too high into orbit, and then they were just gone and just destroyed and ruined forever. Uh, here's a fun fact. I actually just wanted to look up Ruby Spears production history real quick. Founded in 1997, yeah. went defunct in 92, and then were refounded in 94, but only for two years. So, uh, fairly prophetic that uh, the end of the world for Ruby Spears was the early 90s. So, yep. well done, actually. I'm, I'm going to take back my comment. Well done. Uh, you predicted well your done. own destruction, Ruby Spears, so good for you. <laughs> oh, man. Now, before we get into like all the crazy characters that populate this world of savagery and super science and sorcery, I guess we should just talk about the main guys real quick, so you know who we're talking about. Let's do it. Yeah. Who right. do you want to take? There's one for each of us. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with uh, Ookla. You're going to start right with Ookla. Okay. I'm gonna, cause I want, I want to build towards Thundar. Build, to- I right? would build towards Ukla, but that's just me. All right, we'll we'll start with Ukla. Oh no 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 no! Hey, look, you know what? I, uh, let's let's build towards Ukla. Okay. Cause I'm doing it. I'm I'm being biased because Ukla is my favorite. Character. Yeah, Ukla is the mean, best. I mean, I like Thundar. Thundar is like if you took Prince Adam yep. oh. from, if you took Prince Adam from He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, and like you added. Like the sort of maybe like the if you added Star know, like Wars he, elements to him to his story. Would, yeah, no, hold on, because I because I thought about this a lot. Yeah. Like, because this was this was like it's it's like if star if the Star Wars franchise, yep. uh, if um, He Man and Conan the Barbarian, yep. uh, like if those franchises just like got like if they just had like a drunk like really sloppy threesome and like muscled out a baby <laughs> like it it would be thundar the barbarian not just the character but just like the whole show right. and the concept in general um but man like thundar i'm gonna say this yeah. about thundar to his credit he is brash oh yeah to to a fault and really you know kind of questing with these two companions like really doesn't there's no strategy involved in how he decides to handle uh, like a task. He just ju- like, and I mean this <laughs> literally. He just launches himself into the problem and is just like, you know what? On the way, like mid-flight, I'll figure it the hell yeah, out. Yeah, there's a and moment like, where like one of his companions like brings up very valid and legitimate questions, like what happens when we find yep. out what this thing does, or when we when we run into trouble here, or when these people show up. And he's like, "We'll deal with trouble when it comes up." And she's like, "Ah, right, yeah, good, sounds good." She's like, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> she's like, I-, "I believe she actually I- said." Can't argue with that. Yeah, can't argue with that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and there, and this, we're talking about Princess uh, Ariel, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like his interactions with her, there are some wonderful moments between Thundar and Princess Ariel, uh, especially where Princess Ariel will say comments like Matt just brought up was like, "Can't argue with that," and like they will cut to a still <laughs> of Thundar that like doesn't have any movement. But he's like kind of got a furrowed brow, and he's just got this like, "What are you talking about?" He doesn't bitch? understand like, a lot of things. That he's wearing, <laughs> like it's so wonderful. There's even one comment that he makes, and like I thought about this a little bit, because like on initial viewing, I was like, "This seems a little sexist." Uh, um, I mean, but there then are moments, when I thought it, sure. when I thought it, when I thought about it more, because there's one, there's one distinct scene, uh, like where. Ariel makes a comment. Versus Ariel makes a comment, and like 
Thundar just looks at her with this like, oh, get out of my face, woman. And just and then the, the dialogue is he just kind of looks at like Ukla and he just goes, women. And that's it. <laughs> and I'm just like, whoa. Like it just it threw me off for two seconds. But like it kind of reinforces as a segue into Princess Ariel that like the relationship that he has with her is not a sexual relationship. No. She wants it like, to be. If any, she wants it to be. Yeah. But it, like for Thundar's point of view, it is not a sexual relationship. Which is weird he because he's a barbarian, you know? Yeah, Like you I think know. he'd be into the raping like, and pillaging of places. He's not so much. No. He's much less Conan. And, or much less barbarian than Conan. Actually, you know what? I'm going to say he is much more Batman. Uh, that's a stretch. Just in- <laughs> that's a stretch. I'm going to say more no, I'm, He-Man. I'm, stretching. I'm going to say more I'm, I'm He-Man. Reaching, I'm reaching... Well, Dude, I guess it's He-Man. Man. <laughs> Batman. Is he- no, I was just saying Batman in Batman. terms of his morals. Like, he Batman went anything. to college. <laughs> <laughs> There's like, no barbarian college he- in the, the super science future. Anyway, he majored in super yeah. science. Yeah. yeah. Barbarian tech. Come on. <laughs> Barbarian. Well, go ahead, Sean. What was your what was your point on on that one? I just I just I think that like Thundar has a lot of morals that are very similar. Oh, okay. He's like he he is he is constantly trying to save yes everyone. people from the wrong that is being like that is on this earth. You know, he feels that he has to be the person in many cases where he is the only. Uh, how do I want to say this? He is the only person skilled enough to yeah, handle capable. that situation yeah, yeah. despite the fact that he has support from right. from Ukla and Princess Ariel and uh, in in many cases uh, he's very stubborn yeah definitely and he doesn't he doesn't and, he, and finally he won't kill anybody yeah that okay like, i can see just, that as just, the batman he just yeah. he just he just kind of is like he's like at the end of something it, it's again and we've talked about this like in other uh, I think like in uh, was it like dinosaurs and stuff like that like you know where like they capture the villain and they're just like scram you yeah know? they just like, send them send them away scram! Yeah, yeah. like and that's and that's kind of what Thundar does like he's just like I don't need to I don't need to kill you but I do need to foil ruin like your day week month year yeah and I can and see that as the uh, the Batman angle I mean there is definitely a lot of comic book influence in this yes. from that so I mean you've got the Conan obviously the side of it. The Batman, I don't know that Batman comes into it so much, but I see what you're saying. I'm going to say I more think, He-Man than anything. Turn, just a good hero. Just, yeah, classic maybe, hero. And maybe it's just because I haven't watched a lot of He-Man recently. Oh, okay. I, I've, just been watching, I've just been watching a lot of oh, Batman. I mean, the dude so looks exactly those, like him. That's the weird thing. I mean, he, and that's what I'm saying. Is like In terms of looks, like he looks exactly like Prince Adam. Um, but in terms of some of his morals, I feel like he taken a page from Batman. Fair enough. But, Would Batman, okay. here's, Batman, here's a question. Would Batman say things like, Demon Dogs? Uh, Lords of Light, uh, you know things like that. I'm not gonna do his war cry. <laughs> nah, he, nah, he would just, he would just like, he just would growl. just throw his brow yes. and just growl. Yeah. Um. Would he, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> would he have a sun sword? I think. I think yeah. <laughs> I mean, the the one thing that we should mention uh, before going to Princess Ariel yes. is that we mentioned sort of like the the similarities that this show has regarding Star Wars. And one of them is that yep. on Thundar's left wrist, <laughs> uh, he has this, it looks just like the hilt of a sword. Yeah. And whenever he pulls it off uh, and holds it in his hand, like it, it glows and it becomes like this lightning sword. Um, and that's he, that's his main weapon. Yeah, it's a sun that sword. Just, yeah. that, that or just picking shit up and just throwing it. Well, that's what Ukla like, likes he, to do too, yeah. Well, Ukla likes to do that too. I mean, they both. Yeah, with, with an eye beam. There seems <laughs> yeah. to be a ton of them around. So many eye beams. So many. So many. Eye so that's beams. interesting. We so, didn't get uh, to see it too much. There's a little bit more on on Thundar's backstory. We didn't really get to see it. You kind of get a glimpse of it in the intro, and I think there are other episodes that reveal more of the backstory. But he and Ukla, who we'll talk about in a second, were slaves of this uh, wizard. Sa- is it Sabian? Is the wizard Sabian. Uh, I think that's his name. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, Sabian. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. It's kind of strange. Yeah, it's a little strange. So the wizard Sabian, <laughs> who's uh, Sabian? apparently like Princess Ariel, was in his, uh, I don't know, was was captured by him yeah. or was well, I don't really know because we didn't get to see a lot of that stuff. But she frees the two of them and gives right. Thundar the Sun Sword. Uh, that's really the only origin we see of it. So we don't see too much. But um, but that's about it for him. And I'll. And I'll be honest, that is enough for me. Yeah, like, that's all you need. 
because he's out doing hero yeah. stuff. That's it. With Princess so, Ariel. Like, yeah. So Princess Ariel. Well, like, hold on. I want to give Matt a Matt a chance to <laughs> jump in here if he wants to talk no, about no, no, Princess no. Ariel. It's, it's not that. It's not that I don't want. I, like I wanted to pose the question. Shoot. To Matt as he begins to to explain Princess Ariel. Yeah. What what can't she do? Because she's wonderful. Right. Yeah. She does a it's lot. It's just what 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 is she unable to do? Wait, is that like an actual question, or is <laughs> it's that like more, a... it's, it's more rhetorical? Does she have her, Does she have limits? Because it doesn't seem like. Does she, yeah, does, does she have limits? Does she have limits? Because she does not. She has no limits. Well, apparently, the only limit is uh, her ability to be loved by uh, Thundar. Oh, that's, so that's sad. all she really wants. Oh, that's sad, but true. You want to tell anyway. us a little bit about Princess Ariel, there, buddy? Yeah, so uh, she's a sorceress, um, and she is the stepdaughter of the evil wizard uh sabian there he is but uh it, it, which seems kind of weird to me so she's good like he's an evil wizard stepdaughter you figure he would have just kind of like brought her over to the evil you yeah, know maybe he tried i don't know i didn't see that one maybe it's a cinderella kind of thing going on yeah Anyway, so apparently she learned a ton of uh, about Earth's history from his library, mm -hmm. which is pretty hilarious to me. I mean, you kind of get uh, kind of a look into that in like the first episode, and then like uh, here and there as you go more throughout the series. Yeah. But again, like you know. I guess a library made it 2,000 years, but nothing else did. Well, the funny Maybe part the... about that is just, like, why? Like, why is she telling us about our own civilization as viewers? Like, Thundar doesn't give a shit. He doesn't really understand what's happening. Ukla yeah, doesn't Yeah, like in the first English. episode, helicopter, whatever. <laughs> oh, man, I can't wait till we get there. But, yeah, he doesn't oh, yeah, care. Shit. She's telling him all this stuff. He doesn't care. So, I don't know. She's just trying yeah. to, like, find a way into that cold stone barbar barbarian heart of his. I don't know. <laughs> It would have been hilarious in later episodes where he's just like, don't care, like middle of an <laughs> yeah. explanation. Like Archer just like, like, walks nope. off camera. <laughs> I've had I've had enough. I'm just so tired of your scholarly bullshit. <laughs> and then like Ookla does like a, a really sarcastic like growl or something like oh, one of man. His <laughs> yeah. Well, I just want to see. I would just want to see Ukla and both because Ariel wearing like uh, t-shirts from Barbarian Tech, and he's just like, "I didn't get in," and you're just like, "We get it, Thundar. You're a dum dum." You're a dum dum, but he got in yeah, on football scholarship, so he's okay. <laughs> yeah, or maybe like the GI Bill or something. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Please, someone out there, Photoshop that. I want that. I want to see that. Oh man. But yeah, speaking of uh, all the things that Princess Ariel can do, so what are her powers? You mentioned that she was a sorceress and she got all the book smarts. But what the hell can she do? Well, basically, she makes things out of light. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of like a weird summoning thing. Like in one of the episodes, she kind of like makes a little tornado that sucks people up. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's kind of like, you know, just light shields, like bursts of light. It's kind I mean, of like anything really... goes, though. She's just like, eh, whatever my imagination yeah. thinks. She doesn't do a whole lot. I mean, she doesn't get super creative with it, but any time they come up against, uh... you know... Well, I mean, there's no, like, um, like super complex constructs. It's usually just like, oh, there's a chasm here. Let me make a light bridge. Oh. Well, you know, in her, in her defense... Yeah, I think I it's mean, great. You're, li you're living in, like, this 2,000 years in the future where yes. everything has, like, devolved except for, like, this sorcery super science stuff. Yeah, everything's um, devolved except for really advanced science stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and robots but, that are sorcerers. And robot yes. knights. <laughs> but everything, oh, man. everything else is not. But like in but like in you know, in episode three, it's like that thing where like, you know, she it's interesting because like episode three was like the first episode where like she gets confronted with a problem and like she's like, Oh crap, like she doesn't use her powers right away. Mm when she's being attacked by these fire whales and <laughs> like i love i love saying that word too. <laughs> and fire, also it was great because she just stares it down yeah she shock. stares it down and so this fire whale like she, like swallows her into his like mouth and then thundar like jumps in and like just pulls the teeth open and gets her out and then hops hops away from the fire whale and then she's just like, okay, don't worry. I got this. I've recovered from that initial shock. One of these fire whales is coming towards her. She just makes ramps. <laughs> and just she makes a ramp for this fire whale and throws one fire whale into another. And she just looks at Thunder and she goes, two down, two to go. I was like, ah, oh, 
You are yeah. such a fucking badass. She's pretty badass. Like, yeah. Ah. I do like her. She has a cool power. She can do anything with it. You don't have to suffer through her, like, struggling to learn how to control her power or how to manipulate it. She's just got it. You know, she's got it. She's done. She's and you don't have to. And you don't have to go through, like, the insufferable history episode right. where there's, she's just like, this is how I got my power. Like, yeah. I don't give a shit. Nobody cares. Like, just shoot light nobody, around. Nobody cares. Like, I get it. Like, pretty much her power is, like, the deus ex machina yeah. for every situation that they encounter that like that they can't either punch or exactly. like or slice sword their, their sword way through. out of. Yeah. yeah sword slice their way out of or sun sword slice their way out of like she's just like oh no, don't worry about it. i got this so cool. let's 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 like, look at that now as teamwork because she's kind of the brains here because she has to think about mm-hmm. how to use her powers and get them out of a situation or out of a battle Definitely. thundar like sean said basically he's, he's pretty brash he just kind of dives into things however the remaining member of this team is just beyond <laughs> thundar in his uh, aggression. He will attack trees, trains, <laughs> anything that moves. He just attacks Hel- it. Doesn't matter what it is. Helicopters just smashes the shit oh, out of yeah, him I while he's in it. <laughs> That's amazing. So we need to talk about Ukla the Mock. Ukla yes! the Mock. Yes! Oh, he's so good. He doesn't speak any English. Um, he's a big, very tall, very hairy, kind of fanged creature that oh i don't know if you were to if you were to make a pop culture comparison to some other type creature who doesn't speak and growls a lot and has human companions and is covered in hair and is like eight feet tall what would you say he resembles oh Guys. hey dave that's a really good question yeah, i would 100 percent say <laughs> chewbacca he's, he's definitely just chewbacca and they changed his name apparently this was not <laughs> originally in the story uh i think steven gerber i think is the guy that that uh, <clears throat> created this whole thing ukla the mock was not originally meant to be added into the the heroic side of things this was like a network decision that gerber was not pleased with but i think it worked out pretty well because not only because yes. of the success of chewbacca that you could just play off of but because ukla is just a nutty character and they have a lot of fun with it. <laughs> uh his name this is actually interesting his name is spelled o-o-k-l-a and then the and a mock m-o-k is a species of like these these cat-like humanoid creatures Ukla yeah. is actually UCLA. That's where they got the name for him because the guys that were writing and creating this at the time happened to be having like lunch on UCLA's campus. Get they, out. That's what Wikipedia says, and they never lied to me before. So they looked at it and they were like, oh, Ukla, that's a weird name. Why don't we call him that? So there you go, kids. If you were wondering <laughs> if Ukla ima- got his name. <laughs> I can imagine like the opposition co- uh, conversation to that being like, well, why don't we drive over to USC and name him You Suck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there it is. But Ukla, oh, Ukla does not suck, my <clears throat> friends. Ukla is to best. He's my favorite. Uh, he's just he's the Dragonstein of this show. Uh, Dave, why is why is you why is your favorite? Because I, he's I, the I, Dragonstein of this show. He's just he's nuts. No, I know, I get he that. He just growls I mean, what, the whole like, time. What? Yeah, yeah, his his growling and stuff kind of irritated me a little bit. I will say that, but I love his personality because not only does he listen to Thundar, so you know that he's like, yep. you know, he's got a brain. He can actually like listen to things and he knows what's going on. He tries to protect Princess Ariel as best he can, and he just dives into shit. I mean, he will just oh, yeah. run down a mountainside and punch a train <laughs> because he doesn't understand or like, what's help happening. Smash the controls of a helicopter. Yeah, so say he's piloting a helicopter, much like I don't know Chewbacca in a spaceship. <laughs> Chewbacca at least yeah. has like opposable thumbs and can use things and push buttons. Uh, Ukla rips controls free of the panel and then just kicks the whole device he straight kicks, out the front he of the kicks helicopter. Kicks the entire control panel. He and gets so mad. Uh, just smashes it. And he's very durable, kids, because he crash lands this helicopter, mm-hmm. along with the horses, which doesn't make any sense to me, but he crash lands this helicopter and then just walks out perfectly fine. He's got no problems. Oh, my God. His only, his only weaknesses, from what I can understand, are this, uh, this thing called the Death Flower, which has hypnotic abilities that uh, basically stuns him and then puts him under the, the wizard spell. Um, Ariel's magic, because she can actually, like basically knock him out or just like cause him to go unconscious if, if he's raging right. or whatever she can she can calm him down and i think just magic in general because the wizard gemini who we'll talk about in a second he at one point tries to stun all the characters and he manages to stun ukla not thundar because of a reason we'll talk about once we get into the episode synopsis or the episode discussion 
but uh, he can also stun Ukla with his magic, with his like eye lasers or whatever the hell they are. Mm -hmm. So, he's, well, the other the other yeah. the other thing that they mention is that uh, he gets real pissed off. Like all mocks, yeah. hate water. Oh, I hate water because they're cats. Hate they're cat water because they're cats. Yeah, the cat kitty creatures. cats. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. I just I, that was that was like the funniest. I don't know. In episode two, when when they divulge. <laughs> Or reveal that information you're just like what all right you know what i'm on board like i love it <laughs> yeah ukla is pretty great oh and, and baron brought up this point i didn't know what this name was um beforehand so thundar rides a horse princess ariel rides a horse ukla because he's this big cat freak chewbacca creature what does he ride bat what does he ride no nah, i forget what it was called. Uh, you bastard. Oh, the, it's called it's the, uh, the ecort yes yeah, ecort or ecort eq yeah. O -R -T. O -R -T. It's this weird, yeah. you had a very descriptive way of uh, mm -hmm. painting a picture of this, this creature. You remember? Horse with Down syndrome. There it is, kids. It's <laughs> this like weirdly, it's a beefed up, so it's kind of like a Clydesdale, but it's definitely got a downy face. Uh, there's <laughs> oh, something God. just kind of off about it. I oh, don't, boy. I don't oh, really boy. know. We are going to get some hate mail from No, you. it's just super oh, science, guys. It's super science. You can have super downs in the future if you can have super oh, science. Geez. I'm we're just going to go with it because we're that. already deep in it here, guys. <laughs> I'd like to take this moment to distance myself as far as possible from this oh, show. Fair enough. We're gonna t let's talk about Gemini because he's the other bad guy besides me and Matt on this show. Gemini, uh, he's the big bad. He's got an interesting thing going on with his face. Oh, uh, boy. Geez. Yeah. So Gemini. Does he? Yeah, Gemini. He's so, kind of like. How Gemini, would you describe him other than his face? Before we get to that. Well, I, I kind of. Eyeshadow kinda... enthusiast. <laughs> <That's laughs> yes, very much so. <laughs> Holy crap. He has got a lot of. Uh, he has got a tremendous amount of eye makeup. A lot of guy liner going like, on for Gemini. A lot of guy liner. Oh boy. Oof. I mean. Red and black. Just very, 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 very frosted above <laughs> eye uh, look. That not only uh, is just above the eye, but just continues around. Um, yeah, like half his face. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, the very... smoky eye style of t oh, 3994. Yes. Oh, there it is. Well that done. is perfect. Yeah. That is so good. But otherwise, from that. his eyes, he's basically dressed like some sort of weird knight wizard. Like he's dressed in yeah, like armor exactly. and like the old tunic style, like the medieval tunic. And I don't know why he's got this obsession with knights. He surrounds himself with robotic knights, too. I don't know if he thinks he's like so, a King know, Arthur character this, or what, but yeah. Like, there were a lot of parts that there were, like, this made me laugh really hard because it made me think of, like, the stylized gangs yeah. from the movie like The Warriors. Warriors. Yep. Yeah, it was, like, one of those things where it was just, like, yeah, like, you know, we're, we're called the Big Boppers and we wear, like, purple bell bottoms and suits or we're the Baseball Furies and we all dress in, like, baseball costumes. Yeah. It, feels like, it feels like whoever the leader was of – whoever the, the wizard leader was, everybody else kind of, like, dressed yeah, like him. Very, in very similar fashion. Or if he didn't have know, any followers, he just built his own robots and dressed he, them however he, he wanted. Yeah, because yeah. he doesn't have any friends because he's a dick. So – yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Uh, all the villains that are in this show, all of the, uh, all of these these sorcerers, like they are all just assholes. Well, like that's not that's only the to, thing too. Not like, only the Thundar, but they are like assholes to like each other. The people who are below them, <laughs> right. no, like not. I actually, I didn't, I didn't watch enough to see if there were as any, like if there's an interaction between like. Uh, Gemini or like uh, Mind or like uh, Mindok or like any of the other uh, sorcerers uh, or evil wizards that are in this, right. but like I, I would be curious to see that. I, like I, I'm, I want to continue watching this show to see those interactions. Like I, I'm I'm fascinated by this. Um, God, yeah, I don't know. I just I'm sorry, I got off on a No, it's cool. It's like my curiosity with that whole thing is that like, okay, so it's not just like a wizard or a sorcerer it's just like this plague of sorcerers that happens to like be taking over the yes. world at this point it's just like holy shit the only humans that are left are battling all these different sorcerers so one is bad enough and now you've got all of them out there that's kind of cool i thought that was pretty interesting there's just like these weird clans led by sorcerers that are just like wreaking havoc on this place it is just a strange yeah. but really really cool um storyline i like that i kind of wanted to watch more didn't get a chance to um do you want to jump right into this first episode? I believe we all watched The Secret of the Black Pearl. Is that correct? Or did okay. you guys watch others? Yes. Okay, cool. 
Yeah, I mean, do you want to talk about that one? We've kind of teased the listeners a little bit about it. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I'd like to, like, I think we can kind of, like, sum it up pretty quickly. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, this, there is a lot to this episode, and I feel like if we were to kind of, like, hunker down on this, like, I mean, there, here's the thing, is the pacing for these episodes is, like, if you were to just do, like, a bunch of Adderall. Yeah. Like, if you were to just, like... I mean, like, these episodes are moving faster than Turbo Teen. Oh, boy. I mean, they are, like, they are nuts. And, like, I think that that's, like, the pacing is really what pulled me in for Secret of the Black Pearl. Yeah. Because there are, there are just moments, and we talked about this, like, right before we started, where, like, they're, like, they will have resolved something, and then you're just like, okay, cool, like, what's next? Like, if they finish this, then what else is going to be next? And Thundar is just like, Ookla, Ariel, we ride! <laughs> and, like, they are just off. Yeah. Like, they are just gone. And it is, it's it's pretty rad. And, like, you don't you don't need to see, a, like, there's not a ton of, like, a, like establishing shots of them, like, going somewhere. It's, like, yeah. two seconds later, two, they're just yeah. like, we're here. Well, I mean, you're introduced like, to them. It's, like, 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 hardcore heroic ADD. Oh, yeah. That's what it's been. Yeah. Great, yeah. man. I mean, you're introduced to these guys just, like, it's, like, this heroic music, like, and then they're just riding through the forest, and he's like, we can't stop. And they're like, I can barely see. And he's like, the wizards won't expect us to ride at night. And I'm like, all right, I don't know what's going on, but I'm on board. Let's just keep going. Yeah. And then, like, like crazy shit the, happens. like a literary device, like, uh, in, in Medius Rest? Like, it just dumps you in the middle. Oh, I don't know, and, but like, that sounds you just good. Ta- yeah, that's exactly what it is. Sounds means. scholarly. I, I, I like it. To make, to make you look intelligent. Thanks, Princess um, Ariel. Like, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, but it's like... It's it's one of those things where it's just like like any Chuck Palahniuk book, mm, it, it, yeah. you know, usually uses that as a literary device where like it just drop you in the middle and they're just like you know what forget about all the other crap we'll explain it if it's necessary yeah. and like that's exactly what this show did and like it's not in a boring like it, it just it never got boring for me no. so pacing was pacing was a big thing there was only I only want to point out there was one really weird like establishing shot in terms of like them like uh going places okay. like on their horses yeah. which was in i think it was harvested doom um uh at one point they they were all on their horses and they were heading in one specific direction and there is like you know like the top of like a fountain you know like the decorative top yeah. that might be like a cherub right like on a fountain and it's just the decorative top of like a fountain just on the ground and you see all three of them on their horses one by one just ride down a hill and then the horse jumps over this cherub <laughs> fountain thing and then keeps me just all three of them just like jumping over this cherub thing like one after the other and I, I just it was it was a bizarre thing but here I feel like somebody took a lot of time and energy to draw that like top of a cherub right. thing and they were just like this is getting in the show <laughs> like Put my foot down. You know what? You guys got to put a Statue of Liberty in the first episode. I'm putting this cherub in Harvest of Doom. Like, no ifs, ands, or buts. Sorry. Put a lot of work into this, guys. This cherub, or I walk. (laughs) It's cool, though, because they do try to work in things from, quote-unquote, our civilization. Uh, So, like, things like the Empire State Building, uh, the Twin Towers RIP, uh, they work them in there, too. So, a lot of stuff... That uh, and they travel around too. Like if you look at the episode synopses, if you look at the list, they hop around the country, to all different, all different cities. I mean, they go to New York, they go to it's, Boston, they go to Atlanta. It's awesome. Yeah, they go everywhere. I'm wondering why when I played the Fallout games that Thundar, Ariel, oh my god, yeah, showed up. They never showed up. That that is no. I'm sorry. That is watching this show. <laughs> yeah. I had the exact same feeling as I did the first time I played Fallout exactly. 3. I was like, this all seems super familiar, and I love it. Yeah. Like, it's just an alternate reality, and I love be- I love going to some place that is very different, right. but at the same time, like, I have a familiarity with the environment and everything that's there. Like, oh, no, there's a, like, groundling rat person. <laughs> right. Let's have fun with this. <laughs> And we do have fun with the groundlings. Yeah, it is cool, though. Yeah. Like, we were talking about this before. <laughs> this was last week when we were deciding if we wanted to review this show or something different. And I was like, guys, you got to check this out. Because when I watched this show, I don't remember the intro. Because this popped up on, like, Cartoon Network or Toonami or something like that. And I just remember watching bits of this show, but I never had any kind of, like... It's actually really strange going back and thinking about it. Because I never had any 
like foundation of what the hell was going on in this show. I thought it was like Mitor or the Herculoids or any of those kind of like barbarian type shows where it was just a barbarian and a sorceress and a creature fighting against bad guys. I had no clue it had this like post-apocalyptic far-flung future Earth setting to it. And I when I was watching it as a kid or even as like a, like a young adult or whatever, I was just like, why are there like cars and shit in there? Like what what is ha- is this just like bad animation? Did they just like reuse old shit like I didn't understand it until this like very week when you know I actually got to watch the intro for the first time yeah yeah that was pretty cool but they do have a lot of fun with it they bring in well Sean mentioned the groundlings which is one of the first kind of like minor enemies that we run across and there's a lot of things like so this. yeah so like that that was the whole thing is like you know Thundar Thundar and, and his entourage are <laughs> riding through this forest middle of the night they hear this human. They go and save him from these like rat-like like, without pause people called Groundlings. Yeah. Like, and I'm talking about like this in terms of like pacing of the show. Like the dude that they save is a human, yep. and he's immediately like, "Gather around, let me show you this amazing thing yeah. I have." <laughs> yeah. and he shows them, like immediately. Yeah. It's just like I don't know if like you like. Here's the thing. Like, I feel like sometimes like, like, my mom is like a skeptic. Okay. In terms of like interactions with like people like if okay. my mom had been rescued in the middle of the, she would have been like get away from me i don't know you for anything <laughs> you look nice and you saved me but you could still be bad people, so basically don't know? put your mom in charge of the black pearl <laughs> do not put my mom in charge of the black pearl please but like this guy just basically is just like hey here's this black pearl take this it needs to go to manhat manhat like, the, ruins the ruins of, of manhat, manhat with the human civilization and, like, yeah and, like, that was, like, the first thing where I was just, like, oh, shit, they're talking about Manhattan. Oh, aren't they? yeah. And, like, they, like, they, Thunder gladly accepts this quest and then immediately just, Ookla, Ariel, we ride! <laughs> and, like, they're just gone. And, like, they suddenly, they get to Man, they get to Manhattan and they, this is what's cool is that they do these kind of, like, slow pans or they have some of these, like, stills where, like, you yeah. see Thunder like kind of against like this the backdrop of like this this crazy world and you see these things and you're just like oh that is that is really cool like in episode two it happens where like you see him standing like on the bridge like in front of that train and you see like the moon cracked in the sky behind him right like in in this they do this like first episode they show this like slow pan of like all of manhattan and like the statue of liberty is like in the water and all these things are just like fucked up yeah and it's, and it's cool just, like you, design and cool visual style too it's, it's pretty neat it's it's the first time that they established that like in this show that like other than the intro that like you were on earth yeah. and this is a fucked up earth yeah i gotta tell you one thing before we uh, get to manhattan before we talk about the pearl and what it does and all that stuff the moment that i was not necessarily hooked but just made me laugh out loud okay so we've got these groundlings these rat creatures Thundar and his buddies just kicked the shit out of them in the forest because they were just using, like, clubs and stuff, and they were just, like, rat humanoids. They chased them all back underground. Well, they contact their buddy Gemini, who... We never talked about this before. He has a head that flips around, and he has two heads. So he's got two faces. Oh, yeah. One on each side of his head. And whenever he's pissed off, it flips around. (laughs) Matt, both heads are enthusiasts of... Eyeshadow. There it is. Yep. Yeah, he loves the makeup. One much more than the other. Yes, and, uh, very yeah. much. Okay, so. hang on. I've got to go like you know Greek mythology on this here. Do it. If he was gonna have two faces mm-hmm. on one head, he should have been called Janus instead of Gemini. Ooh. I don't know. Maybe there was copyright infringement with the uh, the Romans. Pick up a goddamn know. book. <laughs> with up... what? With the with, there was copyright infringement with the Greeks. I'm just I'm just bullshit. Yeah. Uh, with degrees. With a polytheistic face that hasn't been around forever. <laughs> Janice would have been good. But Janice. For how many years? Janice sounds like somebody from like years. Three's Company or something. Janice. <laughs> Janice. That's not exactly a villain's name. Like, oh, Janice. The wizard Janice. It's like a housewife <laughs> name. Gemini, on the other hand. But anyway, Janice. Janice, we're rat people. What do you expect from us? <laughs> so, so he gives he gives the rat people. This is my favorite part. He apparently outfits the rat people with weapons and vehicles. What are these weapons and vehicles? Still clubs. Still wooden clubs that just happen to shoot lasers. Because why not? So you got clubs that shoot lasers, and they're riding frickin' motorcycles. So they come riding these motorcycles out of the woods, 
and Thundar at this point has been like, Ariel, Ookla, you go on ahead, I'll take care of this. I'm like, why are you doing this? There's no reason for you to be doing this. He just stands there and just like wipes out 50 of these groundlings with laser clubs and motorcycles, which that was the well, point no, he, of absurdity which, that I just loved. Well, that was, I thought, like, the thing that made me wildly giggle is the fact that, like, he's just like, uh, what was it? he calls them, uh, instead of motorcycles, he calls them motor steeds. Motor steeds, yeah. He's like, these motor steeds! And then, like, Ariel's She's like, like, uh, they're, they're motorcycles. They're motorcycles? Uh, like, motorcycles. <laughs> I love that he knows the word you... motor, though. Like, <laughs> yeah. he knows the word motor, so he's clearly familiar with, uh, you know, the, the six the six cylinder block engine. But, uh, <laughs> right? does not know about like, do motorcycles. You think it's, do you think it's something where, like, Ariel's occasional disdain or correction? of Thundar is from like a place where she's just like like where do you think I'm sorry do you think it is disdain or do you think that she's just like I'm really concerned that you might be dumb and I'm trying to educate you I think she's well. just really into him and she is concerned that he's he's real dumb so she's just trying okay. to get get the ends and also to educate this dumb dumb because there's just some, there's just like, there's some moments that I'm just like, oh, that's such a sick dig. Well, look, like, I'll, I'll tell you just... <laughs> one particular moment, okay? So at some point during this hoopla, they enter the subway system. They make a bunch of goofy comments about movie posters that are on the wall and stuff like that. Yes. But then, in a very stereotypical oh, well, fashion, Do you remember what the movie, do you remember what the movie oh, yeah, was? absolutely. Jaws 9. Jaws 9. Yeah. That's so Jaws good, man. Nine. So good. Movie. <laughs> Thunder's like, Movie? Yeah, he, he knows what a motor yeah. is, but not a movie. Anyway, so there's a like stereotypical a moment picture. where Ariel gets kidnapped. And she's very helpless in this moment and is at the, you know, the, uh, the mercy of her kidnappers and has to wait for the two big strong heroes to come save her. The funniest part is when they actually do she basically just more or less gets herself out of prison. She just zaps. I love when she zaps Gemini because she just locks his helmet closed with her magic. Like yep. one of the weirdest spells. Like why would he have a lock on there to begin with? But she just locks his helmet <laughs> closed and then he's completely like helpless. Um, so it was interesting. Like she did get kidnapped. She was the damsel in distress, but then she was very capable once she was actually like rescued. So that was, I was kind of on the fence about how they handled her character. Because normally, most of the time, she kicks ass. But then there's stupid stuff like that where she kind of gets kidnapped and has to be rescued. So, I don't know. That was a little strange. But, yeah. I I mean, like, I think the... I, just to go and continue with, like, some of the things that happens uh, from, like, that point forward is just, like, she's captured. They go to, like, rescue her in a helicopter. Yes. Which is amazing because there was, like, a... There's, like, a Matrix moment where, like, suddenly, like, yes, Thunder's thank like, you. whoa. I know how to pilot, uh, like a fucking helicopter. Yeah, out of and they nowhere. Just do out of nowhere. So this just... the helicopter comes from Gemini and his like robot knights. Um, so that is fine. But then I was like, when Thundar was like, oh, I know how to pilot this thing. I'm like, you didn't know what a motorcycle was five minutes ago. How do you, you know how know to pilot a, a helicopter? Was. <laughs> you didn't know what a movie was. You <laughs> dumb dumb. How do you know how to pilot a helicopter? He like looks at it and he's like, oh, this makes it go up and fly. And we're like, oh, well, all right, do what you got to do. Yeah, fair enough. Hey, maybe oh. turn it over to Ookla the Mock. He seems like a good pilot, yeah? Which, hey, he does. And <laughs> does he? Like, Certainly yeah. landed it just fine. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. Well, you can only fly it once, <laughs> these helicopters. They Shot. only fly once. They perform this like amazing heroic yeah. you know, feat of saving uh, Princess Ariel. And then they get... Like he grabs her and like he like Princess Ariel's like I hope you have a good way of getting out of it like I hope you have like a plan to get out of here and she like they look out a window and Ukla is piloting this helicopter and he's like <laughs> ah, ah, and, like can't fucking figure it out the entire time Ukla is like growling and screaming at shit I'm substituting in my brain everything that I think that he's saying and I'm just like I love this yeah. <laughs> I love 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 every. Because I'm just like, oh, these controls, these dumb humans. Ah! He's probably like very like depressed but eloquent about it. He's like, it's probably something like, well, I could use my uh, superior intellect to pilot this helicopter and rescue my uh, fellow individuals. However, I've been doing this for a number of years and has not got me anywhere. Perhaps I will just crash into the ground and end this all now in a fiery blaze. <laughs> That's what I like to uh, think. Possibly. And possibly after this, uh, maybe somebody could scratch the mane and my yes. ears. If I happen to survive, uh, someone needs to take this um, thorn out of my paw because it is driving me fucking <laughs> insane. 
I feel a belly rub would be in order for the end of the successful mission. But basically, right. he just crashes this fucking helicopter into the ground and then walks out scot free the best while thing, bringing well, the horses. Okay. Here's the thing yeah. you think that's crazy, all right? <laughs> you flash back to the top of the tower. And Thundar <laughs> yes. is looking at Princess Sarah, and he's like, "Well, I got a backup plan, which is to jump <laughs> like eighty stories, two hundred yeah. feet down, <laughs> just down the side of fucking Gemini's base, yeah. onto a horse. Yeah. Like, like no problem. Like, he's just like boom, just balls right down on that the, horse, like, just, yeah, just not right into that. To their horse credit, back first. Yeah. To their credit, <laughs> the animators made the horses kind of go like, "Ooh," they kind of shrugged a little bit, like, "Ooh, that was slightly <laughs> unpleasant." I don't know if I if appreciate that, was, that. Yeah. Like, here's the thing: in 2,000 years, horses are super strong. Horses are solid. Any that would have been if that apparently been so are testicles. Else, yeah, exactly. Because, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> humans in general. Like, if that would have been today, if you would have fallen like 80 stories out of the back of a horse, you just split that horse in half. Yeah, and then you just would have been a be, puddle on the you'd ground. You'd be dead. Yeah, super like, dead. But it was great. I loved it. <laughs> the horses but, like, survived. They, they get, yeah. Like they just they get to this point where like they they return everybody back to Manhattan and the like and the people the humans that are in Manhattan are just like they welcome them back as yeah like, and you, you think know, you're as, done at this point right saviors. right yeah, yeah you think right. like oh great right. episode really cool the heroes win they got the black magic pearl that like negates Gemini's powers everything's cool everything's good to go mm, maybe not maybe not so much mm, nope because all of a sudden Gemini shows back up oh, and shit. it's just like. He's like, hey, guess what? I'm sick of I'm sick of dealing with your crap. Yeah. Like, take this, and he reanimates the Statue of Liberty before and the I, Ghostbusters I should... did it. I yep. should say that before the Ghostbusters did it. This is 1980 or 81. Good and stuff. And I should stand corrected. He doesn't reanimate. He <laughs> animates. No, no, no. It's a little <laughs> known fact that the Statue of Liberty, Statue of Liberty <laughs> was a giant uh, human uh, <laughs> that was just <laughs> petrified and became the statue. Yes, this is a historical fact. <laughs> He, he just, he, all of a sudden, the Statue of Liberty just starts attacking them. And here, here <laughs> is where the brashness that we've mentioned about Thundar really enters in. Because this is, like, <clears throat> this is a ridiculous challenge. Like, this is suddenly the biggest threat that they have faced so far, yeah. all right, is this looming Statue of Liberty that is, like, you know, I don't, I don't know how big the Statue of Liberty is. It doesn't matter, but, like... This... Well, like Thundar says, it's like fighting a mountain because they can't yeah, do anything exactly. about it. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so, like, this, um, this uh, mountain is, like, coming on to them, and, and they... And Ooh, just, sexy. Like, it is... It, uh, mm. <laughs> it's the, the Statue of Liberty... It was aggressive. Yeah. The Statue of Liberty's torch becomes, like, a flamethrower. Yeah, it was awesome. And just starts, yeah, it was, it was rad. And so, like... All of this stuff is happening, all right? And so what is Thundar, like, what does Thundar do well, <laughs> in his... First, Go first on. he slashes her foot with his sun sword, and he's like, it's like fighting a mountain. Ukla, yep. Ukla has my favorite reaction, uh, because he just picks up... What does he pick up? Was it an eye beam? Yeah, yeah it was an eye beam. Picks up an eye beam, yeah. cra crawls and climbs his way up the Statue of Liberty, clonks it in the head, and then just falls yep. off onto its foot and like passes out because he lands on his damn head I loved it I love that part it's such a dumb dumb <sighs> and then basically oh, this is interesting too because you don't see this in your standard your heroic um, you know heroes versus villains cartoon shows the heroes pretty much lose they, they more or less lose at this point you don't usually get to see that right. I thought that was pretty interesting so yeah go ahead and say yeah. what you, you can wrap that up with how he kind of kind of saved the day yeah yeah, kind of. Yeah. I mean, like, it, it sort of seemed, I mean, it was kind of like a Pyrrhic victory. Yeah. I mean, like, he ends up taking the Black Pearl that, like, they've been protecting and, like, questing after this entire time, and he just throws it into the Statue of Liberty, and, like, I guess the the, the energy that the Black, like, Pearl creates, yeah. like, it negates the energy and magic that is in the Statue of Liberty, and it also, like, trickles over and affects Gemini yeah. and, like, gets rid of everything and so you know they're like but it also consumes the, episode, the black pearl like we don't know what happened to gemini but it consumes correct, the yeah it just it just destroys it yeah. like which is, blows my mind because i was just like like that would have been like throwing like a baseball at the statue of liberty like you know at no point in time like i mean you know here's the thing 
It's a magical device. Yeah. You threw a magical device at a magic <laughs> Statue of Liberty. It's like matter and antimatter. And it just consu- yeah, exactly. And so it just it just it, it consumed it and it took care of it and then that was it. And like Thunder like apologizes. Yeah. And is just like, "Hey guys, super sorry about that, you know. <laughs> we kind of we kind of destroyed the thing that like right. you needed." And they're like, "Don't worry about it. You know what? Now that we know that it works, now that we know what it does, which was the question that they were trying to answer." Right. He's just like, you know, we'll try harder. To, yeah, to find I more. love that. And that was Thundar like a very just, American, like, can-do attitude. He's like, now yeah. that we know that it works, we'll try even harder. I was like, all right, yeah, you do that. Which, you starving like, Thundar, pile of humanity, Thundar, go ahead. <laughs> Jesus. Thundar, without missing a beat, just goes, Ookla, Ariel, we, we ride. ride. It's so like, good. They're off, they're off again. Literally off into the sunset <sighs> to the harvest of the doom, or harvest of doom, whatever it was, doom harvest. Oh boy! Did you guys, before we wrap I this just, discussion up, have any more comments or want to see anything in from other episodes you watch? Because I didn't get to watch too many more. So, I just, you know, I'm I'm interested, as I mentioned before, like they introduce at least in the first three episodes, they seem to introduce kind of like a different wizard yeah. in each episode. I'm kind of curious. One of the big things that I want to do is I want to watch more to see if there's ever like wizard on wizard action. Ooh. Yeah, that's Good right. Lord. That sounds like some Rule 34 action. Yeah. Yeah, I hope, I hope so. Speaking uh, of. Uh, speaking of. Because now it's. Talk about Rule 34 Yeah, show. briefly, because it's become a staple of this show. And I don't know if you guys like it or not, but here it is. Man, there is a lot. And boy, is it graphic. And some of it doesn't make any sense anatomically. But what are you going to do? It's, uh, oh. when you got a mock involved. What rhymes with mock? Yeah. Yeah, buddy. TikTok. Oh boy. Yeah, there's a lot of craziness going on out there. You kids. Yeah. You crazy drawn I mean, kids. I, uh, <laughs> thank you. I just I just just want to say thank you, Deviant Art. <laughs> like, yeah, man. For... <laughs> um but yeah, any I don't know. Uh you know, like for the reasons that we, we continue to, to mention about this show, the pacing, like the insanity of some of these like these villains and their henchmen is just awesome. And, and the fact that like, if you, if you check out the Wikipedia page, just the fact that like every episode, they're in a different geographic location. And um, they feature it too. That's the cool I mean, part. They don't just say like, yeah, Oh, we're here in Atlanta. Like, like they feature it. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and it just, it seems, it seems really interesting. Like I know that in the, in the second season, I think there's an episode where they're like in the UK. Yeah. And I like, that. I have so many questions, like how the hell did they get to the UK? Like, because they seem to be pretty, like, Northern American bound and also Mexico. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm, I'm curious to, like, I want, here's the thing, is that, like, I'm going to keep watching this show to answer those questions. And even if those questions never get answered, <laughs> I'm totally cool with yeah. that. Well, you got 21 episodes to go totally through cool and see if it answers them or not. But uh, mm-hmm. anything else yeah. from the show you guys have before we move on to our conclusion here? Nothing else from the show? I don't think I have anything else. No miscellaneous little details or creepy Rule 34 mentions. I got nothing else. Oh, 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 my oh, gosh, oh, oh, oh. my gosh. Uh, the, one thing, the one thing that you mentioned uh, bef- like when we were discussing everything before, yeah. um, so there is some reused animation oh, that is, is in this show. Okay. This, in this show. And it becomes very apparent <laughs> whenever you see Princess Ariel get on a horse. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, and it, like... And, so it occurs two times in the first episode, and it occurs again two times in the second episode, and I believe maybe once in the third. Uh, but it, it's like it's Princess Ariel when she runs up behind the horse, and then she like kind of puts her her hands like on the like she jumps up and puts her hands on the back of the horse and like throws like vaults herself, over jumps yeah, up. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And so as she's vaulting, it is like. You can tell and notice it because it is like deliberately janky. It's go- it goes back to like, like that nature. Brave Star like, kind of just... janky like sideways walk kind of thing. It's like a weird herky jerky motion. Yeah, yeah, it's real strange. So Fun like, little it, stuff but like, like that. It, they re they reuse that multiple times, <laughs> even in the same episode. And like the first time I saw it, I was just like, "Is she okay?" <laughs> Like what's going on? And then they used it again. I was like, oh no, it's just fine. This is just somebody being cheap. It's I just it. what okay. it is. Yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't like her and Thundar yeah. just had a little tryst off camera. I don't know. Yeah. Nope. I don't know. Nope. Good stuff. But yeah, this one's fun. I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with recommendations. I'm gonna say definitely check this one out because it's a lot more fun. There's a lot more 
depth to the story than I ever thought there was. So it's a fun one. Go go check it out. What do you guys say? Definitely watch. You're a definite, and Sean, I know you are. But what do you what do you got to say? Yeah, I'm an abs- I'm an absolutely cool. I, I just I think that this is fun, and it's just it's it's interesting, and I I'm glad that I, I made a pick that did not include dinosaurs. Yeah, well, well, it could have. Uh, surprisingly, it did not. At least the ones I that could, we watched. I mean, Dinosaurs could have yeah. worked their way back well, into my, the future. Yeah. Here's the thing. I'm glad that I enjoyed this for the two reasons. Uh, it did not. It did not initially include dinosaurs or feature dinosaurs as the main <laughs> right. character. And I couldn't find a. I couldn't find a drug episode either. No, I mean the closest I, one I think the, is like the Doom Harvest. Those, yeah, because that was kind of like yes. these weird, uh, Which, like uh, hypnotic flowers, but not they were really. pop. They were they were poppy. Yeah, come on, yeah. They were getting but it high. wasn't overt. I mean, that was actually a decent drug episode if you're gonna do that because it shows the dangers of them without like hitting you over the head with it. So it was actually pretty good. But it also kind of misled me that like if I ever am under the influence like that, I can just get in like a lake and it'll just instantly get rid of whatever ails me. Yeah, you can also just go into a rage and just start attacking your companion. So, you know, either way, <laughs> whatever you want to do there, bud. Yeah. <laughs> Good times. Yeah, check this one out. We're going to have links up because uh, I believe Warner Brothers actually has put these together on a uh, complete series collection. So we're going to have a link up on our site. If you're interested, you can get check it out. Uh, you can also find these on like Vimeo and some on YouTube. Uh, you can find them different places. But uh, if you want them all together, uh, you know, please consider our referral link because it helps to fund the podcast. And let's see. I think it's time for plugs. So you guys have anything coming up in the next couple of weeks? Sean, let's start with you. Oh man, do I? Uh, starting this Wednesday, I believe that is the is this the twenty fourth. Yeah, that'll be the airing um, of this particular podcast as well. So yes, today, if you're listening uh, today, the, yeah, on, yeah, today, uh, the twenty fourth of September until the twenty seventh of September, uh, I and a group of people we are putting on uh, what is called the District Improv Festival. Right. It is the second annual District Improv Festival that will be in our nation's capital. Um, we have shows that are going uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night, uh, Friday night, and then all day Saturday. Uh, 30 different troops. 10 of them are from the D.C. area. Nice. 20 of them are from around the country. And it all concludes with uh, TJ and Dave, um, who if you don't know who TJ and Dave is, please Google them. You actually probably recognize the majority of their faces from like their commercial work and other stuff that they've done. Cool. But they are just geniuses and brilliant, and we couldn't be happier to have them here. So. You can, uh, you can check out the schedule and look for tickets at districtimprov.org. Awesome. We're going to have all that info up on our page. Uh, Matt, do you have anything coming up in the next couple of weeks? Uh, I don't have anything coming up uh, that it's eventful in any way, <laughs> but what I do have is next week's pick. Ooh, you jump, you jump in ahead Ooh, of yourself, sucker. We'll get there. Ahead. We're going to tease the listeners. you got to stick around for a little bit to hear that one. I don't know what it is yet either, so I'm going to stick around too. So we'll just hang out together and be buddies. Um, I don't have any plugs, but Matt mentioned this last week, and I feel like it's important to bring up. We, we talked about it a little bit, so I just want to mention it again. We are Saturday Morning Cartoons, and that's Morning with a U. The reason that we decided to kind of style ourselves that way, other than just the very obvious pun, is that we really do miss these cartoons. We miss the ones that aired on Saturday mornings on network TV that everybody could watch. You never knew exactly what was going to come on. Uh, you never knew how long it was going to last. You never knew what the seasons were going to be, but it was fun. It's something that like our generation and generations before us had to look forward to, and they can look back on with nostalgia, and they can talk about it. That is over, people. That is done. Yeah. As of this coming Saturday, the, the 27th, Matt found this information, Vortex on the CW, which is the last uh, Saturday morning, Sunday morning cartoon block, <sighs> is done. They're done. Uh, they're pulling the plug. They're going to replace it with a series of edutainment programming and reality series just a bunch of live action garbage like Caesar Milan talking about dogs and like these random veterinary adventures and just I mean it's it's fine I guess it's not exactly educational it's definitely not as entertaining as Thundar the Barbarian but you know it's it's unfortunate because the networks have kind of lost the ratings battle and the economic battle to these cable networks where kids can just find these cartoons pretty much 24/7 and that's just the state of the world it's just unfortunate that uh, they're losing that kind of shared experience of a Saturday morning where you sit down, get a bowl of cereal, and just watch cartoons, man, and just be a kid and have fun. So that's yeah. unfortunate, but we will still be here. And you can find us at SaturdayMorningCartoons.com, morning with a U. 
You can find us on Twitter at Morning Tunes. You can check out some awesome, crazy gifts and lots of crazy stuff from cartoons, past and present and future, on our Tumblr page at SaturdayMorningCartoons.tumblr.com. If you want to pester me on Twitter, you can do so at Dr. Claw MD. And if you want to find Sean, he'll be at. Feel free to be a jerk to me at Sean Paul Ellis on both Instagram and Twitter. And if you want to talk to Matt about uh, Down syndrome horses, you can find him on Twitter. <laughs> Oof. Yep, bring it <laughs> at, back. At bag of sandwiches, and I'll just start forwarding it right to my lawyer. <laughs> That's the plan. Now, since I left off with Matt, and he teased you earlier, Matt has the pick for next week's show. So, buddy, what are you going to make us watch next week? It is going to be Jawsome. Oh, no! Wait a minute, is that a thing? Is that like a cartoon, or is that just a weird description? <laughs> Hold on, I don't understand. Is that a description of the show we're going to watch? Is it going to be Street Sharks? Is it Street Sharks? Hey, yeah, Matt, it's Street Sharks, right? Yeah. Oh, well, you oh, can't okay. just say Jawsome, because fuck, the <laughs> 80s, that could have been a show. Like, that could have been, oh, stay tuned for Jawsome. And I've been like, all right, that's Street. probably a thing. Street Sharks, Lang Sharks. Dude, so no, I'm just up. saying that next week is going to be Jawsome, oh. because all we're right. watching Street Sharks. Oh, there it is, everybody. Got it's the got pick it, for buddy. next week. We're watching Street Sharks. I remember being a fan. I don't remember if it was ironically or or not, but uh, Street Sharks, yeah. Oh boy. Good okay. Stuff. Cool. There it is, kids. So if you want to know a little bit more about Street Sharks, since there will be no more Saturday morning cartoons on TV, you'll just have to listen to them here on Saturday morning cartoons. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>